Hello and welcome back to another Chinese food adventure. I am in Xiamen. I got out of quarantine last night so you can imagine how excited I am after 10 days of quarantine food it was good I'm not complaining but I'm ready for some serious serious taste bud stimulation so we're going on a food adventure here in Xiamen today of course but before we get into it make sure you slam that subscribe button as hard as I'm about to slam these foods today there are so many things I want to eat today in Xiamen but the very very top of my list is something called Sha Cha Mian satay noodles Satay noodles are an absolute staple food here in Salmon. You can find them everywhere in this city. And I know what some of you may be thinking. Hmm, satay. Isn't that an Indonesian slash Malaysian slash Singaporean thing? Well, yes, it is. So satay actually came to Salmon about 300 years ago, brought back from overseas Chinese living in Southeast Asia. But over the years here in Salmon, it's taken on its own signature style and flair. Today for our satay noodles, we are coming to this place here. It's called Sili Sha Cha Mian. Uh, it seems to be a pretty famous place, so I thought I'd come and check it out. Okay, so basically this is how it works. At the front of the shop, you have this massive display area with all the ingredients that you can choose from. You can choose your own ingredients and what goes in it. But if you're like me and you're a little bit overwhelmed with what you should choose, I just asked her for her advice. You uh, have to eat it. So I'm just going to let her choose for me. First she puts the meat, seafood and offal toppings that will be going in my satay noodles into this little cooking net which will then be cooked for about a minute or so in this clear watery broth. She then grabs a piece of juicy tofu from the satay soup base and cuts it up into the bowl. The cutting technique here had me mesmerized. So after the meat and seafood are cooked, it's plopped into the bowl along with the fish ball. And then it's time for the star of the show, which is of course the satay soup base here. I mean, look at this golden color. And at the very end, it's topped with some fresh garlic. My goodness, talk about fast food. It seems in the blink of an eye, I have my massive bowl, or I guess cup of cha cha mian, but it is a massive cup if you're interested in the size. Roughly the size of my head. My oh my, would you see the variety of ingredients in here? Obviously we have our noodles, but we've just got everything under the sun. We've got fish ball here. We've got lots of seafood. That's a calamari ring there. We've got tofu, some octopus here. So this one here, this is yajin, duck gizzard. This is some kind of offal. I don't know, maybe lung? I'm, I'm not really too sure. And a token piece of green. All of this came to 30 renminbi. That's roughly $5. And this is really gonna fill me up, but this isn't even the first thing I'm having today. Anyway, enough talking, let's get in there. The first smell that's coming at me, I have to say, is that garlic, because it's just been popped on top there, but underneath it, I do smell a subtle peanut in this. Not as strong as I thought it was gonna be. Um, oh, I'm so curious to try this. Mm. So good, really balanced flavor, actually. I don't know what I was expecting. I think I was expecting something like a laksa, like very heavy and very rich. Definitely it is rich, but it's a bit lighter on the stomach, I feel. There's something about it that makes me feel like I could definitely eat this entire massive cup of noodles and I would be not feeling really bloated at the end of it. Oh, the tofu is really good. And that's thanks to it being submerged for hours in this satay soup base, busily absorbing all of those yummy flavors. Really curious to try this part. I haven't tried duck gizzard before. Oh, it's crunchy. Really interesting texture. It wasn't what I was expecting. Who would have thought a part of the duck could be so crunchy? Apart from its skin, of course. <laughs> Get some seafood here. Mm. That seafood is so fresh and so deliciously tender. You'll find a lot of amazing seafood here in Salmon. It's a city by the sea and seafood forms a huge part of the local diet and economy for that matter. Fish ball. Mm. Yummy. I think it might be the seafood in this dish and those Southeast Asian flavors, but something about eating this makes me feel like I'm on a tropical holiday. You know, I'm here in this very humid climate. It's so green here. Everything is green. It feels like green has exploded all over the city and it's literally everywhere. On the side of roads, climbing up like expressways, trees everywhere, beautiful flowers. Honestly, I feel like anything coming out of quarantine is gonna taste amazing but I think this will taste amazing any day. So we are heading to our next food stop and this food we're about to try is gonna be all about the seafood. So we had a bit of a taster of how good salmon seafood can be in our sha cha mian and our satay noodles. It was very delicious, but I wanna know more. I want more seafood, I am not satisfied. So we are heading to try something I've wanted to try for a really long time and that is the salmon oyster pancake 
full of oysters. It looks absolutely delicious. On a side note, I'm just walking through these beautiful streets right now. This architecture in Salmon is just absolutely stunning. I mean, look at this. It's so nice. Okay, so we are heading off the main stretch into one of these smaller alleyways and we are going to be finding a very, very famous place for oyster pancake in this alley here. It should be called Lianhuan Hai Li Jian. I have found it, but it seems to be closed. I guess I am here at 8.49. I had an early start to the day. You can see I'm excited to leave quarantine. I'm just like, as soon as I'm up, I'm, I'm out, I'm going. What time does this open? So it looks like it opens at 10.30 a.m., which means I have to wait an hour and a bit, an hour and a half and a bit until this bad boy opens and I'll come here and get some brunch. So how does one kill time here in Salmon? I guess I could go to the beach. This is a city by the sea. Let's go to the beach. Let's find a taxi. Hey, hello. Hey, there's no And just like that, we were off, speeding down the coastline of Salmon towards Baicheng Beach. Ah, Here's the beach. Oh, that looks really nice. But my driver told me there was actually an even nicer beach just a little way further up the coast. So we continue down the coastline for another couple of kilometers until we reached our final destination, Huangzuo Beach. It's very big. Look at this. He wasn't lying when he said it was a lot bigger. This is a massive beach. I wish I wore more sunscreen. Oh, that's nice. Now it really feels like a holiday. This is so nice. And honestly, it's a really nice beach. It's really big. Not that many people, which is always nice. The water is warm. It's a sandy beach. Got that golden sand here. After some relaxing beach time, it was time to head back and get me some oysters. Past 10.30, it's 11 now. Here we go, it is open. <gasps> get in my belly. So the oyster pancake starts with a base of spring onion, then a very generous portion of oysters are added. After that, it's in with some sweet potato starch and then it's all stir fried together. Now it's time for the egg. It's whisked, then added to the starch and oyster mix, then it's all tossed together to make what's more like an oyster scramble than a pancake, I'd say. Now that's what I call brunch. There are no words to describe how excited I am to try this. How are there so many oysters in this? For only 30 renminbi, that's like five dollars, there is at least 30 oysters in there. Back home in Australia, if I was to get 30 oysters, I didn't even want to think how much it would be. Not 30 renminbi, that's for sure. And it comes with this sauce here, which is a Fujian style of Tianlajiang sweet, spicy sauce. So first I just want to try some of that. Oh, it's, it is sweet. Not so spicy, but it's got that chili taste. I just know that's gonna go so well with these oysters. Let's go. Oh my God. That oyster, it just burst in my mouth with freshness. So fresh, so tasty. Fire out. Like, look how juicy and bursting with oyster goodness are in that. And you know what they say, oysters are an aphrodisiac. So I'm guessing after this big plate, I'm gonna be feeling some kind of way. And there's another texture in this that I've just realized. So back when he was cooking this and he put in the starch, that results in these kind of jelly-like pieces in this omelet. And it just has a really nice texture contrasted with those oysters, with those spring onions, with the egg. And with that sauce, honestly, everything just goes together like peas and corn. Mm. Just one of those moments right now. I'm out of quarantine. I'm eating delicious food. I'm exploring, I'm doing what I love most, which is making my videos. In this moment, just life is just so good. But it got even better because when I asked if they sell this sauce, they gave me this huge container full of sauce to take back to Beijing. Well, I think it's fair to say I loved absolutely everything about that experience. The food obviously was amazing. The service, they were so kind. They've given me this massive, massive thing of sauce that I'm gonna bring back to Beijing and I'll be very, very happy with. And um, I love this vibe, this, what is I'm sorry, I have to stop talking. I came across this dessert stand that really gave me feelings, or maybe that's just the oysters kicking in. I don't know. It looks to be something like a bean fin. It's called si guo tang. Um, and it's like a mixture of jelly and fruits. <laughs> wow, okay. So she's just gonna give me a little bit of everything. So it looks to be like jellies like bingfen, but 
like more variety of stuff. Like a bit of everything going in there. Wow. Now this was a fun surprise. Instead of a brown sugar syrup like a bingfen, you can choose to have this topped with coconut milk. What a cool snack. So as the day progresses here in Salmon, it's just getting hotter and hotter, more and more humid. So this is exactly the thing that I needed. The thing I never knew I needed, really. I didn't even know knew this existed before five minutes ago. But it looks very bountiful, I think is the word I'd use to describe this. Bountiful, both in terms of flavors and textures and just general appeal. Like, look at that bite there. Oh, no. Honestly, one of the most refreshing things. With that coconut milk and all of those textures and that fruit. Oh, oh. With all of those flavors and textures and that coconut milk is just so refreshing. It's not like a super heavy coconut milk. It's like the kind of coconut milk you could get in like a can and just drink. Um, it doesn't weigh you down. And I love when I come across a little bit of like mango or some pineapple. It really just gives it that extra zing of freshness. As someone who likes to talk, as you guys may have noticed by now, it's rare that a dish will render me speechless. But all of the dishes I've had today, in some way, for some period of time, have rendered me speechless because they've just been that good. Salman, you've absolutely blown me away. I've had a full on food adventure and it's not even 12 p.m. Look at that, five to 12. But you know what that means? It gives me more time this afternoon to make another video for you guys about something else I'm really curious to try when I'm here in Salmon. I can't leave here without trying it. And that's of course the sandworm jelly. So stay tuned for next week's video to see that. And um, yeah, goodbye from Salmon. I'll see you next week. Bye.